In this video, I'll show you how to set up a dual zone mesh pad with an eDrummond interface. I've got the eDrummond connected to my desktop PC running BFD3 inside of Ableton Live. I'll reset the input so we can start with default settings. The pad type is already correctly set, so we're going to go ahead and load the BFD3 drum map. So I'm just going to click on the snare icon here. All right. Next, we need to adjust these gain controls, uh, the thresh control, and these two scalers. I could do that with the mouse, but there is a calibrate feature that will do it for us. Basically, you just hit the various zones of the pad, and the e drummond will automatically adjust the settings to provide enough headroom. The harder you hit, the more headroom it provides. Now, this pad has a center-mounted sensor, and we'll want to avoid that area when we calibrate. All right. Now, if you're having trouble getting good separation between the head, the rim and the rim shot, you might need to adjust the rim shot range control. When you hit the head of the pad, the indicator should fall to the left. And when you hit the rim, the indicator should fall to the right. So what we're going to do is play all around the head and all around the rim and just make sure that we're not getting any missed triggers. All right, so it looks like I need to adjust a little bit here. I'll pull that down there, and it looks like I can make this area a little bit bigger. Let's give that a try. All right, so that seems to be working well. Next up, we'll talk about the hot spot. If you play from the outside, to the middle, you're going to notice that when you hit the middle, you're going to get really high velocity notes. This is the hotspot. So E Drummond has a feature to help suppress the hotspot. So watch what happens when I hit the hotspot. Okay, that thresh control lights up. And if I hit off center, it doesn't. This amount control says how much suppression you're going to apply to notes that land in that thresh area. Now we're getting much more even dynamics across the head of the pad. All right, the next thing I'll do is drop down this hit decay a little bit. You do want to leave a little bit of a cushion here, because if it's too low, you're going to get double triggers. But what this will do is allow our rolls to move that much faster. And uh, I find that mesh pads feel a little bit soft when you hit them lightly. Um, so to tighten them up a little bit, I put a little bit of velocity curve there. Let's give that a listen. All right, sounding pretty good.